wrong person gets a hold of a person that has that kind of followers mentality. It's a little bit not as strong-willed here. They can really take you down the path. And I feel like that's exactly what's happening with Diego right now. Any MMA fan worth his salt knows who Diego motherfucking Sanchez is, or at least has heard about him. He was the Albuquerque native that captured the hearts of MMA fans with his quirky behavior and aggressive fighting style, bringing us some of the most memorable fights in the UFC. Diego came crashing onto the MMA scene in 2002, running through his first few opponents in the regional circuit, winning almost all of his fights via submission or TKO, displaying great wrestling as well as a gas tank that seemed never ending. At King of the Cage 37, unfinished business, Diego even won the King of the Cage welterweight championship when he beat Jorge Santiago. The UFC took notice and invited Diego to take part in season one of The Ultimate Fighter, which he ended up winning when he beat Kenny Florian in the finals. From that moment on, Diego would bust heads exclusively for the UFC for the next 15 years. Beating guys like Nick Diaz, Caro Parisian, Joe Riggs, Joe Stevenson, Clay Guida, and Takanori Gomi, to name a few. Earning Fight of the Night honors multiple times and almost always guaranteeing an exciting fight. Just go watch Diego vs. Caro Parisian or Diego vs. Clay Guida, the first fight, to see what Diego was actually capable of back then. Diego did get in trouble with USADA two times during his career, as far as I know of. One time was for a tainted supplement, and one time when he tested positive for weed, when he KO'd Joe Riggs. I've always thought it kind of stupid to test for weed. I mean, how the fuck is weed going to give you some kind of advantage in a fight? When I smoke weed, I don't even know where I am half the time. I mean, it might give you an advantage in attacking that cheeseburger, I guess. Anyway, during his time in the UFC, Diego did get one title shot, but came up short. He was inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame, and when he finally parted ways with the UFC in 2020, his record was 30 and 13, or 19 and 13 in the UFC. Before we get into what happened between Diego and Joshua Fabia, let's first find out who Joshua Fabia is, or at least who he claims to be. Joshua Fabia is the founder of the School of Self-Awareness, which is based out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. To be totally honest, even after reading his webpage, I'm not entirely sure what the School of Self-Awareness even is. From what I can gather, it's a school that teaches movement and breathing mixed with philosophy and notions of how to improve yourself. Joshua Fabia describes himself as being raised by the world. He has extensive training in things like martial arts, sports, nutrition, and as an instructor working as a military contractor, training soldiers in hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as with weapons. He even claims that he is known as one of the best trainers in the world training Olympic teams. He has those coveted certificates in several military fields and breathing. So again, according to the website, by traveling from the highest highs in the Andes to the lowest lows at the Dead Sea and talking to shamans, Fabia got the idea to create the School of Self-Awareness. He lives in a state of blameless existence cultivating self-awareness before helping others. He has a deep understanding of protection, human rights, and confidence building. At one point, he sought out elders and wise leaders around the world in jungles and deserts to learn universal ancient concepts. He was a successful athlete, and because of that, he understands healing. Fabia also claims that when he was nine years old, his grandfather suffered an aneurysm, and by observing the Western approach to physical therapy, he managed to rehabilitate his grandfather to 85%. That is quite the resume. So what went wrong? Fortunately for Diego, 
Fabia appeared late in his career. He also came during a time when Diego was dealing with a lot of personal issues and was very vulnerable. The two met in the gym when Diego was punishing an aerodyne and Fabia supposedly walked gracefully by. And like Diego said, before I knew it, I was in a therapy session. Diego was getting ready for his fight with Mickey Gall that was slated for UFC 235. Fabia wasted no time and inserted himself as a coach even though Diego was still training at Jackson Wink, a gym he had been with on and off for most of his career. Diego did win the fight and in impressive fashion too. Initially, Mickey did alright but due to vicious body strikes and a depleted gas tank just couldn't keep up with a crafty veteran like Sanchez. Of course, Fabia took credit for the win, claiming that it was thanks to his methods that Diego won and not years of training with Jackson Wink. Fabia also somehow convinced Sanchez that Jackson Wink Academy was not looking out for his best interests, and that things would be better if only he just left the gym altogether. Diego did end up leaving Jackson Wink, which only isolated him further. Now Fabia could really get to work on Sanchez uninterrupted. Diego joined the School of Self-Awareness and appointed Fabia his new head coach. In fact, Fabia wasn't just the head coach, he was also the nutritionist, movement coach, breathing coach, manager, trainer, physical therapist. He basically took on the role of everybody who's involved in training an athlete. I guess you're capable of doing things like that when you're quote unquote a teacher of teachers. Diego started to get ready for his next fight under the tutelage of his new master and that fight would come at UFC 239 against Michael Chiesa. Instead of focusing on, I don't know, grappling maybe, or coming up with some kind of game plan? No, Fabia thought it more important to teach Diego some dim mock bullshit and then go around and brag about it to the officials. Of course, the ref and the NSAC officials got worried and had a talk with Diego in the warm-up room. Diego was then asked politely not to try and kill Chiesa, and the fight went forward. Anyway, a bigger Chiesa pretty much dominated Sanchez here just out grappling him and beating him up. Here's where we got that classic corner advice from Fabia that would make guys like Edmund Terverdian sound like Customato, with lines like, be like Tyson, and crack the coconut. Of course, the MMA community ridiculed Fabia, and at the same time wanted to know more about this enigmatic master that had traveled the world and quote unquote, even the locals asked for advice on how to live. On one episode of the Joe Rogan Experience, the conversation somehow gravitated towards Diego's new coach. Joe had his butler Jamie pull up a video of Fabia where he's teaching people how to solo a heavy bag. They cracked a few lighthearted jokes and that was that. Unfortunately for Fabia, this made him look like a complete buffoon, which he is, don't get me wrong, but now the world could see it too. Because of that little incident, Fabio would start cultivating a lot of resentment towards Joe, calling him out every chance he got, hoping to get on the podcast. As time passed, Fabia tightened his grip on Sanchez when he made him disown his own family, as well as planting seeds in Diego's mind that the UFC was somehow bullying him and trying to do him dirty by matching him up with difficult opponents. He also started talking a lot about CTE, of course, CTE is a thing, but Fabia was trying to set the stage for some kind of legal battle, or hoping for a settlement with the UFC in my opinion. So this dime store Edo Portal was going to take advantage of the fact that Diego was worried about CTE just to make a few bucks. I mean, he was Diego's manager now, meaning he'd get a cut if there would be a big payout. I think Fabia realized from the start that Diego probably didn't have much time left in the game, so he saw him as a meal ticket, some extra money to fund his frivolous travels around the world while promoting his school of self-awareness bullshit. Diego's next fight was against Michel Pereira. Sanchez wasn't totally awful in this fight, but he wasn't that great either. He landed some decent leg kicks, but 
that was about it. Pereira was explosive as usual, landing heavy knees and some good punches. This is not a knock on Diego, but I found it a bit ironic that he stumbled and almost fell down in round one after having trained with a master movement coach like Fabia. It was obvious Diego was focusing too much on breathing and whatever this is supposed to be than the actual fight or the game plan. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that I doubt Fabia even made a game plan. In round three, Diego got hit with an illegal knee and couldn't continue, getting the DQ win. It was obvious to everyone that Diego was losing that fight, so it was probably a good idea to just take the DQ win. After the Pereira loss, some bizarre training footage surfaced of Diego and a few other fighters where Fabio was chasing them around the octagon with a knife. How that relates to fighting, I don't really know, but then again, I never received the ancient secrets from the elders. This only reinforced the idea that Fabio was a complete fraud. Later, Diego opened up an OnlyFans account that was meant for coaching and tips on how to be a fighter. Of course, Fabia took control of that too and started to promote it as, well, you guys can decide. Diego's last fight in the UFC was against Jake Matthews in Abu Dhabi. At this point, everyone knew Fabia was a bullshit artist, but he was going to set them all straight anyway. In the lead up to the fight, he bum rushed Matt Serra, who was having breakfast in an attempt to be more likable, I guess. After that, he went off on the UFC broadcast team at Diego's fighter meeting. You want some video? Contact me and I'll send it to you. You want to know what's going on? You want to actually talk to the people doing it? You might actually have to fucking talk to me. And coming at him like he's going to know all this shit, he ain't. He hasn't been there the whole time. So if anybody needs to actually get those answers, you will have to speak to me. And to do that, probably allowing the media to turn the narrative on the guy that's trying to help people here. And when you respect these two legends, it seems a little disrespectful that you don't recognize that they respect me. And if you're gonna be the one telling the narrative, that's on you when I'm getting shit on by the public, by millions of people. Now, if you're gonna be here, like, leveraging off of all of this, man, notice I'm on the end of the shitty stick here, and none of you have stood up for anybody that needed to be stood up for. And that's real. You guys are, like, the tough guys and all this stuff. If nobody's gonna... I don't gonna know what the f you're talking about. You don't know? You don't no. know, you know what I'm referring to? No, I don't know what you're referring oh, okay. to. I'm and talking. I haven't called one of Diego's fights no, where no, no, you've been in this corner. No, I'm so. talking about... I'm talking in general. What's that? That also has nothing to do with you or your school or your teaching. No, no, no. It has. Seen in the ab ab absolutely. Abs so absolutely. What that's I'm just what it seems like you're doing. You're, you're making it about yourself. And it's about Diego. I'm sorry. It seems have, like that. It was about the commentating. Uh, understand what I'm referring to and why I'm speaking adamant like this? Please, go to Google. Go to YouTube. And just, no, re real quick. Put in my name and then see what's going on with the slander. I've seen it. Okay, so you've seen They're it. They're all well aware of it. Oh, so, so if you're well aware, why are we acting like this didn't happen? Why because are you talking? This, this is, is not, not about you. Boss. This is Diego, Diego's no, no, no. fighter meeting. There's no reason but it has to do out. with him. That's my There's point. Not. Because you're disrespecting us and we have other athletes that are waiting right now to be in this room to have the opportunity that Diego just had and you're lecturing us on something that- Nobody's lecturing, I'm trying done. to ask for a fair like, if, if that's too much to ask for, clearly, it's fine. I was just asking. Of course, being the delusional narcissist that he is, he managed to make everything about Joshua Fabia and how unfairly he was being treated. Diego just stood there like a side character in the Joshua Fabia show. Diego did lose the fight, and any offense that he got off was no thanks to Fabia. Let's be real here. Diego was scheduled to have a retirement fight with Cowboy Cerrone, but the fight was ultimately scrapped because of Fabia. I won't subject you to the conversation Fabia had with the UFC officials, but in a nutshell, Fabia was requesting Diego's medical records, implying that Diego had CTE or some other injuries. The UFC sensing what was up and not wanting a lawsuit down the road for potentially letting an injured fighter compete pulled the fight and cut Diego from the roster. 
they did pay Diego his show win and sponsorship money. Diego tried to rationalize what had happened by framing it like him and Fabia were standing up against the evil corporation, when in reality he was most likely just parroting Fabia's nonsense. Another bizarre training video surfaced, which was the straw that broke the camel's back. I guess normal people like us don't understand the ancient concepts behind this type of training. And after a lot of backlash, Sanchez finally came to his senses and ditched Fabia. But the damage had already been done. Let's go back to when Diego lost to Pereira. After that fight, Fabia received a lot of criticism, and rightfully so. The boys decided to go on a media tour to clear the air, so to speak. Let's be honest here, it was most likely Fabia's idea. Anyway, I watched four whole interviews with the boys and grabbed things that stood out to me. These clips are out of context, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Even in context, Fabia sounds like a complete goofball. And not only that, Fabia goes on these mind-numbing rants that feel like a torture session. If you don't have enough fortitude, he will just wear you down and kind of force you to submit to his bullshit. I don't recommend watching four hours worth of interviews with this guy in one sitting. But if waterboarding your brain sounds good to you, I'll link the interviews in the description. Now let's digest this shit sandwich. But that's the point of if you study and know what I actually do and go to the website schoolofselfawarenessworldwide.com, you would know that what I teach is a method that teaches you how to have an unlimited amount of energy and to understand your body to the level of becoming nobody, K-N-O-W, when you know that you are not your body, giving you the ability to be anybody. What? Fabia sounds like he's reading a page out of Leatherface's diary. Alright, if I need advice on what size skin suit to wear, I'll, I'll be in touch. Josh provides everything that I need in there. Therefore, I do not need two other men that are there to live their moment in the limelight. I have a strong connection and those are the only only words that I should be hearing are the ones from Joshua for I have put him in this position of counsel and advisory. Diego, cough if you need help. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, Diego. He sounds like he's got a gun to his head. He sounds like a hostage, doesn't he? It's, it's, it's out there on video. You can go see me moving with, with real people, live. Like, this is what I mean is there's no papers to justify real. Do you understand? And there's no like, I need to say I've done this or that. That's the beauty of being a real, genuine human being. A human being can do anything. You're not seeing how much I can do. You're not seeing all that. It's pretty big, you know, thing. Take a minute. Go look at my website. Go look at how much I've done around the world. And like I say, this is not a 503. I'm not getting any, like, help. I do this out of, you know, come on. You guys have uh, attacked the guy that's dedicated to help not only Diego, because he needed help because he wasn't getting it. I don't train fighters. I'm not trying to deal with just warriors. I don't deal with a singular market, man. I live in one world. I'm part of one tribe. And because I was raised by the world, I support the world, which means that I support and created something that is viable from everyone that starts living from the moment of birth to the day you die, everything that I teach is applicable through your whole life. So here Fabia is asked about his qualifications as a trainer. And notice the answer that he gives. So he's been moving with real people, not his blow up dolls. Actual real people. It's all out there folks, just check the website. And then he goes on to say something like, you know, I don't need to tell you what I've done because it doesn't matter. 
Well, when you claim to be the best trainer or one of the best trainers in the world, yeah, I'm pretty sure it matters what you've done. You know, it's called credentials. So that shit fucking matters, man. And then he also says he doesn't train fighters. Well, why are you basically fucking training a fighter? And then he tops it off with his fucking bullshit kumbaya one world. He thinks he's the fucking UN or some shit. It's a little rude and insulting to say that to all the governments and militaries and law enforcement around the world. Not to mention Olympic athletes, professional teams. Like, you don't know who you're really talking about. And you might want to slow it down, do a little research, maybe talk to some people. Because I've been the guy that's been supporting people. It's a little rude and insulting to do what? Ask you what your fucking credentials are? What experience you got? Like, have some respect. And nobody's dogging RDA's coach. Now, Diego did better than RDA. And nobody's saying that. Yeah, nobody's dogging RDA's coach because Jason Perillo, he's actually a good coach. And that's fucking bullshit. RDA did a lot better against Michael Chiesa than Diego Sanchez did. Just go watch the fight. But again, I don't need to tell you my codes, man. I don't need to tell you my business. And Diego doesn't when he's trying to shock and awe the world, which is obviously working, which again, nobody's giving credit to that. Here, Fabia gets his panties in a twist when he's asked about the codes, the crack the coconut and be like Tyson bullshit. He doesn't need to explain what those things are when him and Diego are shocking and awing the world. Shocking the world how? By being fucking bad? By losing the fight? Then Joe Rogan's ass makes a fucking slander video, pulls up something out of context, which now comes back in your face and you look like an idiot because this video that you're trying to make fun of me of, that, that like I said, is a normal... It's, it's, it's for regular people to learn how to solo back train, learn how to move to get out of the way, evade, you know, block, be, have your hands in the right position. That's what it's for. It's not for pros to think that this is what I'm doing. You know, come on, out of context. And like I said, there's amazing footage of me. How come Joe Rogan didn't show that? So here he lashes out at Joe Rogan. He's so butthurt because of that video. He, he mentions this all the time. First of all, dude, you, you put that video up yourself. Yeah, you look like a fool, but not really thanks to Joe Rogan. He didn't really do anything. It's, it's all you, man. You're fondling this heavy bag and trying to pass it off as some kind of training. It's for normal people to solo a heavy bag, where you're supposed to keep your hands and how you're supposed to move. Dude, your hands are down. If you're teaching someone to, to move like this, that person should ask for his money back because he's gonna get knocked the fuck out when he's trying to fucking fondle or caress his opponent. It gives you a way to understand things and slow down space and time. It is way beyond what your eyes perceive until you try it. It is an experiential learning process. And instead of creating a space where people can be exploited, I've created it so you do it on your own. So you can do it in the privacy, without ridicule, without judgment. I made it in a language that is available to anyone and everyone. That is what you're looking at on a website. Listen to this fucking guy, man. He sounds like he's trying to convince you to jerk off for the first time. He wants you to do the exercises in private so nobody can criticize this utter nonsense he's teaching. You guys are really hot on the white and the black. You're talking to somebody that's a master of the gray. You don't even see what I'm doing. Master of the gray? Really? Does that have anything to do with bondage or the dildo collection in your playroom? Nobody wants to talk about the sensitive subjects of this sport, right? Like the injuries like the careers and the life after fighting, right? Let's not talk about that. Let's just talk about, we want to see Diego look like Diego after a fight. And that guy, if you pull up any of those pictures, that guy looks pretty bad, whether he wins or loses. Here we got more settlement talk. You know, he's hinting, he's kind of jabbing at the UFC. You know, what are you doing for your fighters that 
might potentially have CTE. I had to cut out a lot of these. Uh, he just, same with the Joe Rogan stuff, he, he goes on and on about this stuff. So he's just kind of laying down the groundwork here for the settlement, legal battle, whatever idea he had in his mind. And considering I never asked Diego for a contract, I never asked him to be his manager, I never asked to do any of this. I never asked to be in the MMA world. And instead of being seen as a person who is able to step into this space cold, no background, keep up and actually help do something, you know, I don't know, what do they, what do they call that? Uh, pioneering, right? They, they, they say uh, you're changing, game changing, right? All these things. How come nobody said that out loud? Wait, hold on, hold on just a minute. So now you claim that you don't have any background, but on your webpage, you said that you have trained Olympic teams, you were a successful athlete, you have extensive training in martial arts. So which is it, man? Either you have experience in this shit or not. We're just catching him in another fucking lie. One of many. As far as being a pioneer, dude, in what? Exactly. The wrestling guy's looking at the wrestling. The boxing guy's looking at the boxing. The this guy's, well, where's the guy looking at all of it? So like a football coach that has the guys on the ground calling in the plays, notice there's a head coach up in the crow's nest seeing the whole thing. And, and nobody's really recognizing, and that's kind of like a little impressive, this guy who has no experience in this game came in and is able not only to handle this pressure, we don't see him shaking. We don't see him bringing Diego down. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that most of the top gyms, they have head coaches, Fabia. This is not some groundbreaking idea that there's a head coach in MMA. Doctors and everybody comes to inspect my hemp oil and my peppermint oil and make a huge deal about it. I'm the one looking at the doctor saying, what's the problem? You don't know how to do this or what? And if you don't know how to do this and you're a fucking doctor, why are you even back here talking about what fighters need, man? If you don't know that if somebody's nose is busted up that you're gonna need to immediately open up this airway and it just so happens we're about to perform with a guy that's been training at the UFC PI, the whole camp, to get ready to beat Diego and I'm not allowed to open up his airway? And see, this is what I mean is, so I open up his airway, there's a problem. I'm blessing the space with incense, but nobody realizes that there's not one holy space that you know of that isn't cleaned with incense. So you go to church and there's incense. You go to temple, there's incense. You go everywhere, there's incense. But the man is about ready to put himself in potential danger and we're about to pray and clean the space. And this is now religious. And we are from New Mexico one of the only states to allow Native American indigenous religious practice. And now my religious rights are being infringed upon? <sighs> I don't have time for this fucking bullshit, man. Imagine dealing with this guy on a regular basis. I've been traveling around the world since I was born. I was on the first kindergarten rugby league in Christchurch, New Zealand. I've participated in martial arts my whole life through actual family tradition of understanding things. Like, quite a bit different than going to a place and giving them money. Playing rugby as a kid does not mean you're a successful athlete, Fabia. And here we go with the bogus martial arts experience as well. A family tradition of understanding things. Yeah, I mean, you, you can, how, how are you supposed to interpret this? Because to me, it doesn't mean anything. No wonder you get upset when people ask you about your qualifications because you don't actually have any. Had, uh, had my guru working on me, walking on me, um, you know, doing our SOS self-healing on this area, getting, you know. Might, might be the uh, reason why he's moving around so well and looking so well. But let's not mention was, was, that. Was that the size of the scar? I can't tell on the screen. Like, yeah, we can't see that scar now. Who took out them stitches? Coach. Oh, that's right. Just saved him some more money. Saved him some more time. 
Listen to the indignation in Fabio's voice and how self-important he thinks he is. Awareness has the ability to dissolve anything without force. Gotcha. But you have to bring the awareness to the forefront. You have to bring the mirror to the person acting ridiculous for them to be aware of it. Yeah, you of all people shouldn't be talking about acting ridiculous. People are head heavy trying to use a language to rationalize the language of the body, which you've overridden and denied. Being head heavy, what is that? Like being a pudding head or being a water head? Let's look at Wink. You got, you got Winkle John missing an eye and missing a nut from training and he's a fucking trainer so you're holding a mitt and you can't even get it there in time this might be why wink why john jones got a lazy eye why holly's got a lazy eye why brown bears got a lazy eye i almost was getting because there's no defense in this camp man they don't teach them any fundamentals they think you can just hit and run and play the hands down because you're six three like john jones so john jones arguably one of the greatest fighters of all time. You know, let's let's put aside the picogram bullshit and all that. He doesn't know the fundamentals. Holly Holm, who head kicked Ronda Rousey, he doesn't have fundamentals. He saved Diego from getting his lazy eye. I hit Diego 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes a day I hit him. So his body understands impact. So he's worried about Diego getting CTE but he basically treats him like a crash test dummy. You gotta introduce the body to a little impact so it doesn't get CTE, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, for someone who's constantly talking about CTE and worried about Diego getting CTE, makes perfect sense to punch him in the head for 20 minutes every day, you know, just to, to let him know what, what impact is. I'm pretty sure Diego knows or Diego's body is used to impact at this point. I'm dealing with a 39 year old. He's only been finished four times. And one of them's, uh, you know, like a fake fight. Come on, to a special needs kid. Like, this is be real here. I was a little confused who Fabio was talking about here. Diego has been finished four times and he lost to BJ Penn, Joe Lozon, Al La Quinta, and Matt Brown. Those are the four finishes. I'm gonna assume that Fabia is talking about Joe Lozon, you know, because he's got the goofy ears or, you know, he's got that look. No, no offense to Joe Lozon. I love him. He's a great fighter. This is what I'm assuming here. Diego got destroyed in that fight. Guys, go watch Joe Lozon versus Diego Sanchez. I mean, Joe Lozon, he he roughed Diego up in that fight. He, he had him hurt in all sorts of ways. And uh, it was a great fight, a legit victory over a veteran like Diego Sanchez. So, I mean, it's just more stupid shit from this guy. Diego should easily be able to take this guy down. Easily. You know, the guy that has the most dangerous fucking flying knees in the game. And nobody wants uh, poor Diego to end up like poor Askren. But, you know, Cormier's saying, get in on those legs. I dare you to come in on those legs, bro. I agree. Pereira does have phenomenal knees. He's explosive. He's, he's dangerous. Especially with those flying knees. But... I also believe that an Olympic level wrestler like Cormier can take Pereira down. And is anyone gonna take responsibility or any type of liability for the aftermath and wake of the effects of those adults that have been traumatized by the octagon and are now in the regular world and who knows what happens, right? Is anybody taking any responsibility for that? Is anybody put any money aside for those, those athletes? No. So we're talking all this shit about CTE, but, it, but if you really cared, is this how it would be? If anybody should take responsibility for giving someone CTE, it's, it's you, Fabia. With your fucking upside down, punching Diego in the head 20 minutes a day, it's fucking you. But I need to point out to you that you're an expert and you didn't point out the fact that it's kind of fucking amazing that Diego Sanchez, 16 years in the UFC, been pretty much the Rocky Marciano of the sport. He's moving. He can change stance. 
He went from being a southpaw to this. How come are you not putting the emphasis on a 38 year old man in less than a fucking year changed his style and one guy did it, not a team of six guys. How come nobody's saying anything positive like that? You see it, but you're not giving credit to the professional who has done something remarkable, remarkable. No love, no credit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Diego knew how to move and switch stances before you came along, Bobby. I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, throw it out there. He's seen me walk around the Holy Land barefoot and not take a slip. Like, understand a year. How many times have you tripped, fell, busted your ass, regular shit? When you say Holy Land, are you talking about the unemployment office or, or the slip and slide in your fucking backyard? You come from a world where you lay down your respect because of a piece of paper because of a past accomplishment that the person is riding on a horse into your fucking space. And you've been conditioned to do this and this is why you chase pieces of paper. I'm in a different world and I do not endorse killing trees to endorse yourself. Listen how idiotic he sounds here. If I would walk into a grappling gym and I could choose between having some random white belt or Gordon Ryan as a, as a coach, I'd pick Gordon Ryan. I think everybody would pick fucking Gordon Ryan because the guy has proven to be the best. He's, he's reached heights that normal people will never get to. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that guy. After Fabia and Diego parted ways, Fabia showed everyone how much of a stand-up guy he was by dragging Diego's name through the mud. You know, just as a farewell gift. He claimed that Diego is an alcoholic, a drug addict, and broke. He also said that he has proof. It's all on video. And according to Fabia, he was the one being taken advantage of. If Diego is dealing with substance abuse, that's very unfortunate. But at the same time, I don't see how that's any of our business. At this point, I could care less what Joshua Fabia has to say about anything, really. I mean... Even his so-called military training was just him completing a Krav Maga course and then paying a fee to be a certified instructor. He then followed some dude around South America on a Sistema tour, like a Make-A-Wish kid. That was his quote-unquote military experience. Anyway, I'm happy Diego finally saw the light. Sad thing is, Diego probably won't be the last person this shyster manages to do. Thanks for tuning in guys, and if you made it this far, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, and all that fucking shit. Until next time.